First, I want to give a very big thanks for you to join this session. And I'm also very happy to be here in Moscow to give this kind of session to talk about uh, how we do test in eBay and uh, how we build uh, the test infrastructure and uh, the test uh, framework and the test platform to support a very big, large size e-commercial website and how to we uh, release very quickly in eBay and with our very high efficiency uh, test infrastructure. First, I will give my give one very short my inter my self introduction. And this is Robin Lu, and I'm from eBay, and working as an engineering productivity tech leader in eBay, and works for the overall test structure and the queue infrastructure for the eBay lot of product line. And before that, I work in the HP and also work in the Arcat Lucent work, work with the test architect, mainly focus on the automation test and the performance test and some test development job to provide a lot of test efficiency tools for the company level. And in Cisco, I working as a senior quality engineer to do a lot of automation for switch and for video system uh, system for function that functionality fun, fun, function test and uh, with the BDD. Okay, it's a very quick introduction from uh, for me. And uh, the major thing is we are talking about our topic today. Here we actually we have two major topic in this session. First, we want to talk about from quality engineering to engineering productivity. What that mean? It's a very interesting part. In a lot of big company in worldwide, in Google, in Facebook, also in eBay, they do not have QE anymore. I mean manually QE or purely QE. There are a lot of job is done by devs themselves. How devs can do test by themselves? How the test knowledge they build? How the test infrastructure they can use? It's become very more and more important to support this module. And I will talk about the concept about the engineering productivity. It's not from eBay, it's from actually from the Google. We will talk the detail and talk the history for this, uh, for this kind of change. And the second part, we will talk, uh, talk about the automation test framework as a service. That, what does that mean? If we want to dev to do tests by themselves, that means we make dev do test very easily. For example, dev want to do test. They want to test different browser with their functionality in website. Is that possible? He built the web browser by themselves. It's okay, but it's very time consuming. If we want, if we want to say do efficiently and do things quickly, if we can provide everything for them, that means when they want to do test, everything is ready there. Everything as a service be there. They just using this service, they can prepare the test date. They can prepare the test date and they can also prepare the test execution environment. And also they can launch the test very quickly just using some uh, very simple UI or just a very simple web service call to launch the test. They don't need to know the details of how the test executions. Everything is service, as a very simple service with RESTful API interfaces for them. It's things will be changed. Everything will be changed. That means test the dev itself, themselves, only focus on the test logic itself. They don't need to care about everything around the test structure and the test infrastructure, test platform. That's a good idea for a lot of big company to speed up for engineering productiv productivity part. And that's a major two top. First, let's see the first order the quality engineering to engineering productivity. As I mentioned, let's start from the Google. Uh, Anyone here heard about the GTAC? Oh, not, not a lot of people heard that. Actually, this is a very famous event in the worldwide from the Google. Uh, he, it's almost hold more, almost 10 years each year, uh, 10 years, 10 years. Each year, we ha uh, Google has this kind of conference to talk about automation test, talk about the test development, because they think automation test is the future for the engineering, for the engineering release faster, deliver faster. But just uh, about one year ago, Google said he will stop this conference because he think the concept has changed. They think automation test is not the only way and not the only methodology for release faster to deliver faster. 
They think we have more field we need to purchase. What does that mean? We have DevOps, we have CI CD, we have a lot of engineering tools to speed up the deliver efficiency. That's why they stopped this meeting and they said they will come back in this year for another meeting we, they call engineering productivity. That means not only automation test is related, also more CI CD, DevOps, some kind of this of field will be included in these meetings, in this conference. That's Google doing. And uh, eBay also follows this strategy. We also try to do some uh, innovation from the methodology level and also from the practice level to speed up the test. What do we do in eBay? We follow this kind of uh, uh, module change. Actually, in normal, in private time, we follow this practice. That means it's a very typical test model in in lot of company. We do UT unit test. We also do API test. That means some uh, for some uh, e commercial e commercial website, it's also API test. In the top of the the, the module, we do GUI test. It's uh, some kind of UI testing, but it's very cost because the UI test it's not always stable enough, and uh, we have lot of failed tests. But with this module change, we come becomes this module. That means we only do little unit test. And the major things we will do API testing. That means integration test. Why we do that? Because eBay, it's a site with microservice, microservice architecture. That means our service, our functionality is mainly in the backend. That means if we do strong back and test, that means we will be qualified for the front end. The front end is very thin, also very diverse. That means we have the front, front end from the desktop, also from the mobile, and also from the iPad desktop. That means if we do a lot of tests in the front level, we will cost a lot. We, are, we cannot spend a lot of money and a lot of time to, to do UI testing, to purchase the higher coverage for the test. What we do is to try to get more focus on the backend API side. So this is the hardest part in the eBay. And in the top of that, we still have some GUI test. But this GUI test is very small or very thin layer. That means we only have a couple of hundreds of UI test cases to go over the major business flow in our test, in our automation test. Other things is done by here. Besides that, we also initiate one very interesting team. We call the exploring test team on the top of that. That means why? That's we have, they have very strong domain knowledge to do manual test. They can find a lot of valuable bugs that automation test cannot do. Automation purpose is to regression, to ensure the functionality is works without uh, change anything when we do the r r full regression. But for the new feature, for the new, new things, this part is most important. We find a lot of bug from here. Okay, uh, this is a model change and the responsib uh, responsibility change is here. You can see here in the previous time, test do API test, test do GUI test. But in the new model, we totally changed GUI test and API test all done by developers themselves. Only test do the exploring test from the domain perspective. That means test will become more domain expert. They more like product owner. They know the products more, but they are not the technical expert. Technical expert is replaced by the developers themselves. So question, we have the question here. Develop, how develop have the in, uh, enough knowledge to do the test? First question. The second question, dev, the most valuable part for the developer is they deliver the new features. They deliver the new feature from the code level. But if they need to, they have to uh, take very long time to build the test environment, to prepare the test environment, to install, to deploy the SUT, it's very time cons cons consuming. It's not a good, good for them. So 
we need to build some kind of strong test harness. We call some strong test harness. First, to keep quality upstream. That means never do test in the early phase, not to do all the tests after the product or after the code is already there. Second thing, we enable dev to do that test by themselves. Why we do that? We, uh, we know if we, we have the test in the previous time, when, we, when developer find a bug, uh, uh, deliver new build, test to get that, get it, find it's not work. The login is fail. Then they file bug to the dev. The dev team get the ticket and do analyze and do fix then release a new build to the test. It takes a couple of days, right? But if dev do the test by themselves, it will be very quick. They know what they changed. And if logging this very basic functionality as a field, they know it quickly. They don't need to fail any bug. They don't have the process level, uh, process level uh, west in the whole process. That means they can do test very quickly, very efficiently. And another thing is to improve the test efficiency, just I, like I told. So if we want to take this three part, we need to build a strong test harness. In eBay, strong test harness means automation test as a service. So next part, I will talk about how we do that in eBay. First, we see uh, I gave a picture from the overview of the eBay's test, uh, test as a service the, um, architect. But we have very limited time in this session. I'm not cover all of them. I just pick up some I think it's very useful and a very valuable part from this diagram. But I will explain the diagram first. All, the, all our test request is from our CI/CD system. That means some kind of Jenkins job and some kind of pipeline from DevOps perspective. So the pipeline will call our test execution service. This service is like some kind of REST for API with some parameter. This parameter say what kind of test framework we use, what's the test case uh, location, where the test case version number, and uh, where some is uh, that we need to keep the report, something like that. Everything is pri parameter. Then the test execution service will get the test cases from our GitLab, Git, GitHub. And the test case internal will call our test data service to prepare the test date the test cases wanted. It's on the fly, or sometimes it's on the fly. Sometimes it's uh, uh, out of box. I will explain this later. And the test data service will create all the data needed in our SUT system the test. And also, test cases will depend on some kind of glo global registry service. What's that mean? This means if we come across some issue about test case, lot of hard code in our test cases, means if what, then what, like something, we need to split the configuration from the test cases. Maybe it's harder to understand. No worry, I will have a very detailed example in the, in the, in the next, next part. We will explain the concept and how we implement this in a very efficient way. That means we have this kind of rigid service. We can let the configuration no more combine with the test case itself. That means every configuration is a configuration file. The test cases is very stable. Test code, test cases code is very, very stable. Okay, then if the test case want to run a test on the SUT, for example, for eBay, we are website. So our test environment Test bed has a lot of different kind of OS with different kind of browser, with different kind of browser versions. And also we have a lot of test requests in mobile level. That means we need to use a mobile phone to test Chrome, to test Safari browser in our, uh, in our mobile devices. And uh, this thing is very diversity. If we let dev do that, it's a disaster. They have to lot of uh, waste a lot of time to prepare that. So we have some kind of test better service. That means this service will prepare all the test execution environment for us automatically. It's trying, uh, uh, the user even don't know where the test environment is. They just need to tell them, I want to run some test on some kind of OS, some kind of browser. 
everything will handle in the backend by this service. We will see the how we designed in in next part. And also we have some test report service to unify our all test in the in our but we have not not enough time so I will ignore this part in in this session. And also we have another we call the unified mock service. As we know we run the microservice architecture in eBay. That means if we want to take test one microservice but this microservice may be depend on a lot of other part. For example, we want to test A, but A depend on B, and B depend on C. If A want to be tested, we have to let B and C as ready. But in most of cases, in the microservice architecture, it's not always that the cases. Maybe A is ready, B is still not there. So we want to test A. We have to do some mock on B. So we have this kind of mock service. We using contract, uh, you uh, um, consumer based contract concept to build our uh, this part. But this is not in today's scope. Just a very uh, brief introduction about this part. Next, let's from this part we let uh, talk about the test data service. It's a very 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 interesting. First, let, let's see some test data challenge from our test. We do test. We know the test data is very complex from the test perspective. First, we need to cover a lot of test data combination. Just for a very easy example, we want to create one user, one eBay site user. Do you think it's difficult or not? Actually, from the test perspective, it's very difficult because we have a lot of parameters. For example, which country this user belong to? What's the payment method? Using PayPal or using credit card? And also, they have some user group and uh, some user favorite data need to create. So only for create one user is complex. We have a lot of parameters need to handle. And the second thing is we a very time consumption for the on the fly test data. First I will explain what's on the fly. On the fly means when we to test, we prepare the test date in our test cases. That means our the first step of our test cases to do the date operations, and then we launch the test. It's a good practice in the privacy time. What's that mean? It means every test data is controlled by the test cases. We everything we can control. We don't come across some dirty dirty data. For example, I want to test the login. If I prepare the data, prepare the user by myself. I can 100% sure this user is a work for me. But if we using some data as already existing, maybe the password is changed by other guys, by other engineers, you don't know. But the test case may be filled. So in the privacy time, we, we prefer this part. But in eBay, it's another story. Why? Because eBay will have a lot of test cases need to run. If we want to use very limited time, to cross to cover more tests, that means each test will be short enough. We we prefer short test cases. That means if we put a, put the test data preparation in the test cases, it's spend a lot of additional time. We cannot accept that because we have fifteen thousands of test cases to run for full regression in only three hours. So we cannot accept that this part. So to Another part thing is for out of box. That means when we prepare the test environment, we try to put every test date ready in the DB. Then we can leverage this kind of data in our test. But as we know, we have the difficulty for the duty data, dirty data. That means somebody maybe change the data, we don't know. But the test cases still using the dirty data. And maybe some test cases will fail. And uh, when the test fails, they already change some data status and not, not change back. And uh, rerun the test, we will come across the dirty data. That's it's also a difficult part. And for test, for some performance tests, as we know, we need to prepare a lot of what kind of things. To need to prepare a lot of big data from the customer perspective, down from the customer uh, 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 DB. It's very time consuming. And also for the microservice, that means we are not the monomorphic architect just put at one time. 
we have a lot of microservices. For example, we create a user. First, we call one API to create the user itself. Then, we call another API to bind, binding this user to this payment method. It's two APIs. Maybe we have more APIs. That we have, we need a cross domain knowledge, cross microservice domain knowledge to prepare that. It's not good. So, how we fix this challenge? How we try to fix these issues in eBay? We were do very interesting part. If I just give you the eBay's architecture about the test data preparation, it will be difficult to understand. So I will give you a, a pass. That means in the beginning, what eBay do? And uh, what's problem? We get it. And how we resolve the problem? And how we innovation in our test data preparation? Then we got a very strong ones. I will follow this strategy to explain how we do te test data in eBay. First, we do as we call the 1.0 phase, just Java-based test data utilities. That means we write a lot of function, function or method to package the complex of the test data preparation. That means if we want to create one user, for example, user can be created by one API or some API call. Also can be prepared by some database operation, CIUD. We can package these operations in this method. That means every time we want to create one user, they just call this method. Everything is OK for that. They don't need to know the detail about the how to create, how to uh, insert a DB, how to which API I can use, which parameters, they don't know need that. Looks it's a good idea, but actually it's not. You know why? Looks is good, right? But it's not good enough in eBay. Actually, a lot of dev engineer and a lot of test engineer complain about this solution. Why? Because as when we prepare the test data, in most of time, for example, if we want to prepare one user, in most test scenarios, or in most test cases, we just need to be this a default user, right? We don't need to, to, uh, uh, to do a lot of change for the user. We just need to uh, default user. But in this scenario, if we want to get a default user, here you can see, we need to provide what? Provide every parameter we need. Unfortunately, this parameter is some kind of class. This one also, also some kind of class. That means before we call create user method, we need to prepare this part, this part, and then we call this part. That means it's not easy to use. This is just a very single example. For this one is more complex. We have a lot of, lot of things need to prepare before we call this method. So this is not a good idea, but it's the foundation for the test data preparation. We already have the basic things for test data utilities. So we make change on that part. Very interesting. So we come to the 2.0 phase. In this phase, we still using still using method based here, create a user with different parameters. And then we try to create more, for example, create a user. And we create a default user. Oh, this is a mistake. It should be user. Create a default user. And then for default ones, we initialize A, B, C, D parameter in this method. And then call this basic functionality to create a user. If we want to create another set of users, we means we were with A parameter. We will do default initialize B, C, D, E in this method. And using this A here, and in this way, we make things easier. For example, when we need to create a default user, we just call this one. And we want to create a seller user, we just call this one. It's better than before, but it's not still good enough. Why? As I mentioned before, we have a lot of different combinations of the parameters. If the parameter is too much, that means this kind of method will be too much. It's not easy to maintain. For example, 
for some time, we add a new one parameter in out here. That means all the methods here, we have to rebuild them, have to modify them. It's not good here in eBay. That's why we build the next generation part. Let's see this part. This part is very interesting. It's very also very critical for eBay, and we're also using this method to save a lot of time for us. In this case, if we want one user, just a default user, we just call this center, user build dot build. Then we get the user. All the parameters will be default. For example, if we want to create a user with country, as a country is uh, Russia, so here we can use a build dot with country and uh, Russia, then dot build. Just we got a user, it's a Russia user. Every other parameter is default. We don't need to care about that. That makes things more easy to handle. If we will have more things to different, you can use it with A and with B, we can have more with to change the default value. If we didn't specific here, that means default value will be used. That makes things easy. In this scenario, in every time, if we want to create a test data, each time we can use just one simple line. Just one simple line. You can see it's a very complex one. Only one line code we can use to create this kind of, uh, uh, it's a seller, it's also a user. So in here, we also uh, introduce some innovation ideas from this build strategy part. Build strategy part. What does that mean? If we using create only, that means the data for sure will be created on the fly. That means the data is created directly from this method. But since sometimes we want things to be quick, that means we don't need to create it. We just need to search in the system. Is there any data already existing in system match our requirements? If so, we just are using that data. We don't need to create them from the beginning. We don't need to do that. So we can use it using this build strategy. We call it search only. That means it's find the matchable data from the system. Another we call smart. Smart means first strategy we were using search only math. If search cannot find the data we want, then we will change to create. That means in most of scenarios, we can get the data from this build strategy. This is also default strategy. Here we don't, didn't do any strategy, but it means we're using smarter ones. The last one is a little bit complex, I ignored here. Okay, we have this kind of things. Everything become very easy for everyone to get the test data. But another problem happens. This tooth is built based on the Java stack. That means everything implemented by Java. But we have a lot of different tests in from the front end. Maybe we using Python. And someone, some framework we using Ruby. And uh, we don't want to rebuild this kind of things in each framework. That means we don't want to rewrite these things in Python, just for Python frameworks. We don't want to write this kind of things in Ruby and let the Ruby framework can using this. So what do we do? We make this as a service. We make it, we're using Spring Boot and the Swaggle, two solution together, make these tools as a service. That means every test cases, whenever what's the languages, what's the tech stack, if they want the, want to get the test data, they just need to call this web service. It's a RESTful interfaces. And this RESTful API will call the Java-based util to prepare the data on our systems. In this solution, everything can, every framework can use in our test data service to get the data in this scenario. And, and also, these things is make things very simple, but some issues do not be fixed. For example, dirty data. And for example, we want to create the data fast. How we improve this framework in future? We do a very creative, we do a very creative part. Just not, of, don't see the picture, just follow me. In, uh, in one thing, if we create one valid 
test data. For example, we create one user. Is that, is that to say we need this kind of user in future? This assumption is correct. In most of cases, it's right. So we try to, in our system, to introduce one capability for what? For if we create the test data successfully in one time, that means our back and the Jenkins job will record this data. And in the back, in the back end, they will automatically to create this kind of data 100 times. That means we already create one user. In the back end, they will create this kind of data 100. And when they create the 100 users in the, our SUT system, then they will keep the user ID in this internal DB. This internal DB is belong to the test data service. He will keep the user ID here. How many data we created here? And uh, the, actually the user is in the real system. Next time, when we need to get the users, we use web service to call, hey, I want a user, what kind of user? And then it will search this MongoDB to see, is that any data already created before? If yes, they will return this data to the system. And the system can use the data here. And also, we will remove this data because we don't want to the test data be reused more than once. That means we try to avoid dirty data, dirty data in this, per, in, per, in this method. We keep everything here, OK? And also, we have tried to build 100 data. But when every time we use it, we delete one line here, right? When the test data is less than 20, our backend automation job will relaunch automatically to backfill, backfill the test data to 100. That means always the test data is enough for the test cases. And also, the test data is clear enough, no, dirt, no, no dirty data. But we can ensure the data is correct because we, although we're using the, the, using the out of box from method, but we get the benefits from the uh, on the fly data. You get the data very quickly from here, like on the fly. But actually, the data is prepared in the backend by some kind of backend jobs. That's it's a very it's a very good design in eBay, and we using this framework to almost in our all all all, all test framework here. But maybe we got some problem also some problem here as from the practice. Or we already do that, but we still get a very little ch chance to get the dirty data. You know why? Because the data is here, and we're using this interface to get the data. But in some scenarios, somebody don't know. Engineer just uh, working on SUT. They manually change the data, right? It cannot avoid this one, because this one don't know anyone direct change in SUT. So what do we do? We add another validation job here. We add another validation job here. And this job also kind of Jenkins job. He will do basic data functionality change, uh, check. For example, the user is active user. The order is active order for some basic, basic field or basic functionality check by this Jenkins job. It found that data is not good enough or is not in the good status, they will automatically delete the data from here to avoid some manually unaccepted unexpe change in directly from here. OK. So next part, we will see some UI. This is the UI for our test data service. You see here, we not just provide the web service. We also provide the UI for some manual testing pur purpose. If they want to do test uh, manual test, they also want some get some kind of test date. In this scenario, they were using this UI face, using this UI face to field the data they want here. For example, this thing, this thing is a filter. They can filter, and they can get the list of the uh, useful data, and then choose one user to, to choose one data to use directly. But maybe you see another challenge here. We have the UIs. That means manual test can using this UI to get the data. 
but this kind of date is in our internal DB, right? If we, if they get the date and make a change on that, this data is not available, right? How we to avoid this? We make a mask on the, on the IDs. That means we can get the list of the date, but we cannot use it because this part is masked. We cannot see the IDs for the date. They cannot use. If they want to use this date, we have uh, some kind of button here. We click the button, then we get the data ID. Say, then can use it. When we click the button, that means we will remove the data from here. That means in the UI part, we still can get the right date, right date, date test date. OK. So this is my presentation for the test data part. And next session, I will talk about the test execution service and the test beta service together. First, I want to explain what's the idea test execution plan for. Here means for the dev or for, for the user, we need to we, we, need, we don't want to know the detail about how we, how we prepare the test execution plan for. We just need to use it. But for the maintainer, I mean the test execution plan for maintainer, they want to easy to maintain. They don't need to handle thousands of test execution machines. It's very waste time. And for, also for some stability to the test case execution, what's that mean? Uh, in eBay, we have a lot of test cases need to run. But in most of the time, the test execution plentiful is free there. If we put a lot of machine there, it will waste a lot of our money. Although it's in cloud, also we need to pay. So we, what we want is when we have the test load, we got a lot of machine to run, in, uh, to run at the same time. But in, uh, in some time, we don't have a lot of tests to run. We just need to keep very little numbers test environment in our system. That's the purpose. How we do that? Maybe you think about doc. We use, actually, we use a doc, some container te technology to prepare, the test, uh, to prepare the test environment. We will see how we do that. Also, I will follow the uh, developers for this part, and not just using the very complex one. I will see what's the early phase for eBay, and what's uh, uh, our mo 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 uh, be best uh, solution for eBay right now. First, we're using this kind of things. As I think most of company and small company using this kind of things. They put the test cases here and uh, using Git and uh, get and using some kind of Jenkins job to pull the test cases here and launch the Maven test or launch using different framework to launch the test on a remote test execution environment. Maybe this some VM and we need to pass the VM IPs here to tell the test cases where to run. This is the beginning stage. The next stage, when we have more tests running on that, the Jenkins job number has become very huge. We have thousands of Jenkins jobs handle different projects, different uh, test versions, different of product. So we make some kind of UI for this Jenkins. That means we can use a centralized UI faces to handle, to control and to manage different Jenkins job with test version control here. This interface also has two interfaces. One is for RESTful API. Another is for UI. UI is for men, for engineer to launch the test. API, uh, RESTful API is used for pipeline, for CICD pipeline, DevOps apply, pipeline for here. Okay. Then we want to run test. We're using one Selenium grid. Everyone here know this this one selenium grid okay not so much people okay selenium grid is some kind of cluster we have the harbor and in this harbor we have a lot of node uh registered to this hub that means if you want to run some test on uh, for example on windows and with ie browser that means they just tell him i want what kind of os and what kind of browser versions. And this hub, we're trying to find, find the browser and OS version in, the, in his nodes. If anything here, 
he will redirect the test cases on this, on this part. Everything is automatically. Only thing, the only thing you need to know is about the IP address for the hub. That means, that means here, you just need to pass the hub IP and the diversity of the browser and diversity of the mobile devices is handled here by this linear grid. But things is not very easy because this hub we have node. You know, eBay have thousands of node, thousands of test exchange node in this part. That means we can run test cases at one time. We can have thousands test at the at, at the same time. That means if we only have this part, we only have a single node Jenkins. It's not good enough. We will see lot very long queue here. And here is a lot of node is empty, is waiting for the test. But here is a lot of queue. So we do these things. We're using some kind of Jenkins clusters. That means we no more waiting queue in the Jenkins part. We can directly to pass all the tests to this node. This makes things easier. But another thing is to a lot of test cases to run in a very short time. But in other time, if we put too many machines, too many nodes, too, ma too many VM, it's a waste of our money. That means we don't need to too many nodes here, right? In most of the time. Only when we run the test, we hope the node is enough. That's our purpose. So we will try to build this linear grid on dock, on container. That means Every node, we have the container. When we have the container, we have the doc, con doc image. When we have the test from here, for example, there are 10,000 of test cases need to be run in one hour. This service, the additional service, will calculate how many nodes will be needed in this scenario. What kind of type of the nodes? For example, most of the tests are running on the Chrome. So they will Build this service will try to build a more Chrome-based node on this linear, in this linear grid. You know we can build two thousands of nodes in one minute, less than one minute. That means we can using one minute to prepare almost thousands of nodes. That means we can we don't need to prepare a lot of resource on that. We can buy our on demand request. We have the request. We build them when we. Wait there. We just discarded that. We just re 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 uh, recline all the resources. That's to save a lot of money in eBay in for from the cloud cloud payment. And also this uh, uh, this linear grid. Also we need to uh, support the mobile devices. Mobile devices. The difficult part is also from the Android. We have too many different Android devices, right? We have the different Android version, and we have a lot of broad bending of the Android. So we using our big data to get the top, uh, uh, top Android module, top Android version, and then we try to build a lab like this. We using this solution, APN, and we put different mobile devices in our lab, and also we using Selenium Grid to build this private cloud. That means when we need to test some kind of mobile requirement, they were told him. It's also some kind of uh, Selenium grid. Also from here, and here, like some Selenium hub. For example, they want Android 5.0 version. They will see is there any device at 5.0 version in this in in the uh, in this in this lab? If have, they will redirect the test to here. That everything, but the user, the developer using this framework, they don't know that. Everything is prepared by the test infrastructure team, by the engineer and productivity team. Dev don't know need to do the detail. Also, dev don't need to maintain this. They just need to know what's the entrance point, what's the hub is. The only thing they need to know. Okay, here is some uh, snapshot for our this mobile private cloud. If we want to run test, we can using this UI to launch the test. You see, we can using run test on real device. Also, we can. Uh, on the simulate, this button uh, to launch single test, and uh, this button uh, to launch the test suite. 
if we, we tick the button, we will try to uh, say which environment we want to run, which country we want to run, what's the test version number. And the test, we also have the test version control for our test cases. We using, we using exactly same version control with our dev. That means if our SUT, then version number is 1.1. .1. That means our test case number, version number is 1.1. .1. It's totally same. So we can automatically select the, the test version number matched with dev ones. And also we can change based on your requirements. When finished, we can see the uh, we can see the pass rate and how many test test case passed or not, and we also have the very detailed report with the code coverage with the Java based code coverage. And this is uh, some kind of test report. We can see every execution statement, and also we have the snapshot for the uh, for the test execution. And if we using shoot debug logs, we will get a lot of additional logs, not from the test execution. It's from the back end service combined together. It's very, very, very easy for dev to debug the issues if some test case failed. Okay. And uh, this part, if we click this button, we will see this sentence is from our test execution. But when we click this button, all the back end log will combine together with the time sequence. That means we can use in kind of uh, Splunk or some kind of uh, log analyze technology to analyze what happens here. That means dev don't need to reproduce manually. Again, they just get this log bundle and using this log bundle to do analyze what happens here. Okay. How, the next part, we will talk about the global registries. This is a very interesting part. What's that? website in worldwide. That means they have the business not in just in US. They have the business in a lot of different countries. But the major functionality, the major function is very similar. That means almost uh, mm, almost uh, ni ni uh, 95 or 99 mm, percentage of functionality is the uh, same. Only very little change. That means from legal perspective and uh, from some, some uh, for example, for the, from different payment method for different country. Also for some deliver method for UPS, for, EM, uh, for EMC, for different, uh, different deliver method, deliver service is different. So in eBay, we don't want to write the test cases for each country. That means we want to build one centralized test cases. One test cases can be run on different countries' websites. For example, we do a logging test. That means this logging test can be run on US side and also can be run on Mexico side or also can be run on uh, French, Mexico, and uh, Germany side. Only one using. If we try to build different test cases, it will be disaster because we have we have a lot of countries. Otherwise, so we, our test case number will become very, very huge. So we just are using one test case. So if we're using one test case, does that mean we have to have a lot of kind of FLs like this? Just to look at this part before, just like this, follow this part. For example, we want to get currency code, currency code. In private time, we write like this. We uh, put the default value as USD dollar for current currency. And if environment is Deutsch side, Germany side, or as French side, we using Euro. Else if environment is UK, we using uh, uh, United uh, 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 UK, we using GBP. Else if environment is US, American, and also Mexico, we using USD. Otherwise, we, through the exception, said and not supported. That means we have to have a lot of this kind of errors. But these things are not good, right? For example, uh, in one time, uh, for example, if we launch a new site in Japan, 
And that means we need to add another else, else f here, right? But this kind of else is almost everywhere in our test cases, right? If we want to, one test cases can be run on different side. If we using this method, we will find if we have new site launch, and we also when we have some function change, for example, one feature in US site is open, is enabled, but this feature in Mexico should be disabled, something like that. We have to write a lot of FLs and to, to modify these things. How we fix that? We introduce another stuff called global registry. What's that mean? Let's we see this part. This method is the right with our new global registry service. With this part, these two have totally same functionality. That means we still get currency code. Here, we just using global registry dot by country and using this method to get the runtime countries. Then, just one method get default currency. How we do that? Because we using additional configuration files here. Each country have one configuration file. That means when you buy country, when runtime environment is US, this global register service will try to find the US configuration files and then get the value from here. Then when we launch a new site, for example, Japan site, we just need to add another Japan configura configuration file here. We don't need to do any change in our test cases here. We don't need to do any change. We just totally same. Just put one new country. In this case, if we want to different test environment have different configurations, for example, Test environment A, the feature is enabled. The test environment B, the feature is disabled. In private time, it's difficult for us because we had code everything here, right? But in this solution, maybe we can have different environment configuration file. That means this configuration file is for environment A, and another environment B have another different configurations, and the test cases always stable. Don't need to do additional change for that part. This is our global register service concept. And we're using this to build our UI test and also to build our API test. We don't need to care about the, uh, the, the diversity for different country. We're just using config files. Uh, but also have a uh, same question about the uh, same question, similar with the test data service. We want to these things build one time and can be used by different framework. Whenever it's right in Python, right, uh, right in Go, Go, or right in Ruby. So what do we do? We make this capability as a service, like here. Become a service. And all our configuration file is put in the Git, in GitHub. That means everyone change the file, everyone change the configuration. We have the version control because we leverage the GitHub's capability to do that. We don't need to care about who, who write, who mo make the modification. We have every log, we have every track for the, all our configuration file here. And uh, the service and the interface will become RESTful. That means different framework, QE infrastructure, test platform, Breeze, Nightly, this is all eBay internal test framework with different languages, can using this service without any uh, additional effort. Okay, then we have maybe less than five minutes uh, uh, left. Let's come back to this part and have an overall picture again. So we come back here. We have the test execution, execution service and as the only interface for our pipelines. And we using global register service to handle test case diversity for different countries for feature on or off 
in the our develop or in our developer phases. And we using our test data service to prepare our test data in our SUT. And we also using test beta service to prepare the Selenium grid for our test execution environment. And we have some kind of mock service to handle my uh, microservice architecture to simulate the mock, simulate the different part for, for our SUT. The last one I didn't mention before. The last minutes I will cover this part. We have some kind of engineering productivity to store. What's that mean? This is kind of app store, just like apples. We have a lot of engineering productivity tools in internal eBay. We, in private time, we each team build tools by themselves. And uh, cross teams, they don't know what happened. They always rebuild something similar. But we build this part. Every team should contribute and should leverage this app store, not app store, tool store, to get the tools they want. That means when you have some special requirement, they should not build from the beginning. First, they should look for this engineering productivity tool store to see is there any tools there that match my requirement. If yes, I just it. If not, they can request the tools owner to contribute, to make modify on it. Also, I can contribute it. And also, I can contribute on it and push back to the tool store. And every tools in this tool store have the start rank. That means every top 10 tools in the company level, we will have the additional reward from the company level. It's a huge price. So a lot of people want to contribute to these modules. So we're using this, uh, this tool store to leverage a lot of company level, very creative, very innovation ideas, very creative small tools in our framework, in our uh, ecosystems. Okay, that's, that's my presentation part. Thank you for your patience.